What is up YouTube? My name is Rahul Reddy and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the top 10 things, maybe 11, I don't really know, I can't count, that you want to bring to a regional championship or higher. Yes, you can bring this kind of stuff to a local level event, but this is the 10, 10 things that I would bring with me to a Pokemon event if I was traveling, if I was going anywhere. These are the 10 things that I'm going to pack and I'm going to break down each one of these 10 things you see in the picture and you guys will understand as we go. So without further ado, let's jump into it. And by the way, if you guys enjoy this content, like, subscribe, and tell me down below what if I missed something that you would probably bring to an event that I might not be bringing uh, to help out other people. So yeah, first and foremost is our deck. Now this is going to sound really, really, really silly, but our deck is what you want to bring. You want to bring your 60 card deck. You want to make sure you've got all your cards ready to go because, well, frankly, if you can't, you don't have your deck, you cannot play the event. So... Make sure you have it. That's the number one most important thing. I know it sounds really obvious, but I know people that have forgotten their decks at home and it makes for a really bad time, a really awkward time. And then I put my extras back here in the deck box and I will transfer them to a different deck box later on. But you might want to buy another deck box or a double decker deck box to put your extra cards, stuff that you might be considering till the very last minute, stuff that you might be buying, all that kind of stuff at the very end. That's the number one most important thing that I think you need to bring to an event. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. Number two is damage counters slash dice. Now, I use these TC Evolutions damage counters because they go up to pretty high numbers, like 230, especially in this format where everything has behemoth amounts of HP, but you want to have some sort of a dice or a damage counter to mark down how much damage or what's happening right now on the board. Uh, everyone likes their own thing, everyone has their own way of doing it, as long as both players can understand what's happening on the board, or if a judge is walking by and they can make heads and tails of what's going on, that works out in your favor. The most important thing to have, though, is a clear die for a randomizer, because you cannot have a solid die for a randomizer. You can use a coin, um, but your opponent can always ask you to use a die. And I don't think you can say no, I'm not entirely sure, but make sure you have a clear die. And for those who love lore, this is from <laughs> fall 2011 when I first started playing the game. They used to give out these really cool die like this that have uh, an engraving on them. So this is my clear die, and I also have this nice, cute little dice bag that has a bunch of dice in here. You can hear it clanging around. And then for this current format, you want a V-Star marker. Um, obviously, things will change from format to format. We'll have different powers, different abilities. But whatever kind of marker you need, make sure you bring that as well. Number three is our ID. I'm not going to show you guys my real ID, but here's my Pokemon player ID. You want to make sure you know your Pokemon player number and have a real ID on hand when you check into a regionals or a locals or anything because every single thing is tied to your ID, your birthday, all that stuff, and sometimes your Google account as well. So... Make sure you have this memorized. I have it memorized. This is from 2010 when I got it. It's obviously beat up to heck. So you got you need this and you need your real ID to do anything at regionals, to sign in, uh, whatever, all that kind of hubbub. So make sure you have those two things. Uh, IDs consist of a license, I think student um, identification as well. Both of those work super, super well and permit. Number four is um, a playmat. My playmat's under here right now, but you want to make sure you have a playmat to play on. Um, just because you don't want to get your cards scratched up on the table, you don't want to get your cards dirty, you don't know what's on the table, to be frankly honest. So pull out your playmat, get it down, get what you need to get done on top of it. And that's number four because, you know, playmats are good. And you can pick whatever playmats you have. There's a bajillion playmats out there. You can buy whatever playmat you want. There is a ton in circulation. I use my top eight European international map. Kind of slight flex. Thank you so much. Um, but yes, number five is sleeves. Always, 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 I think, use a fresh coat of sleeves when you go to a tournament because you don't want any dings, any small markings coming back and biting you when you are playing in a bigger tournament, especially with penalties, markings, anything of that nature. There are going to be like, while you're playing, there's going to be like shuffling dings, things with your nails. Obviously, stuff will happen. Make sure you don't get dinged on that. So always coat with a fresh set of sleeves. And I always pack an extra set of sleeves. And I like to use these pink dragon shields so I can have uh, 100 counts as opposed to 60 because my deck is 60 cards. So I might as well have 40 extra sleeves to just replace them at a moment's notice if I need to. So always make sure you have a new coat of sleeves on your deck. And then always make sure you have extra sleeves on you just in case anything happens. You can buy them at the vendors. There will probably be somebody selling sleeves there. But you don't want to be scrambling last minute. You don't want to be spending a little bit of extra money that you don't need to spend to make sure you get those sleeves. So highly recommend these. These are the banger play. Pink Dragon Shields, my favorite. I've been using them since day one. Uh, weird superstition. I always think I'm going to do bad if I don't. That's why. Number six is a snack. Uh, I know people, like, nine rounds is a long day for regionals, for internationals. Even a locals, like, four or five rounds is going to be a long day. I don't know if your locals has any snacks. At regionals and internationals, there's probably someone selling food. But I don't know if I want, like, a hot dog, you know? Like, I don't want to eat a full hot dog, a slice of pizza. 
uh, a bagel, like that's not like a lot of food. I prefer to chew gum in between rounds. And sometimes I'll pack a candy bar or a granola bar or protein bar like that. I don't have those on hand right now, but I always pack some gum uh, to just chew on, kind of get my mind off the hunger of the long day and uh, kind of tide me over to lunch break or dinner break or whatever we're doing. So always pack a snack. And what goes hand in hand with a snack is water bottles. Um, venues will often have water fountains, but you don't want to wait in line for that. So always bring your own water bottle. This is a little bit bigger than I would bring. I'd probably just bring like a Dasani water bottle or like something that I can just refill at like a water fountain, my hotel room, whatever, uh, in between. And just by having that, I think it already goes like a long way, uh, for, you know, my mental state, having the water on hand, if I need to drink in between games or whatever. I lost count of where we are on number, but next up is the mask. Um, for currently for Pokemon regional events, and internationals and every like level of event, you need to have a mask on. Uh, I use can 95s because I don't actually have 95s and 95s on me, but can 95s do the job just as well. They're approved by the Pokemon company and you need to have a mask on at all times while you're in the venue, uh, besides eating and drinking at like the designated eating and drinking stations. So having a mask on you will definitely get you uh, a long way in the tournaments. You need to have these. So make sure you pick up a clean pack. Obviously after you use them for a day, they kind of get dirty on the inside. So you might want to pick up a couple of masks. Like I, I think I bought a 30 pack on Amazon recently for, I don't know, like 15, $16. So that's very, very simple to do. Following that up, I always bring some cash with me. I bring like 20 to $40 to whatever regional, whatever event I go to, because sometimes credit cards aren't accepted. Sometimes the vendors will just say, hey, we're cash only. Um, cash is easier to move. There's sometimes fees with some of the things that the vendors do. So if you're paying $7 for a pack, let's say that you're paying $10 for a pack of sleeves, the fee might be $2. So all of a sudden you're wasting two bucks. So always, always, always bring some cash just in case uh, of emergency, basically. Um, so that's, that's a huge tip for me to you. Following that, I always also bring a power bank because days are really long. And even though I have a really nice, beautiful iPhone 12, uh, when you're away from a charging section or whatever from like 8 a.m. almost to 10 p.m., your phone's going to drain whether or not you use it. Any notifications that come in, anything you do, even if you're listening to music, nothing in between rounds, your phone's going to drain really quickly. So I always keep a battery pack on me um, just to make sure I have that extra thing. And I think it's very, very useful to have uh, just invest like $20, $30 in one of these and they will go a long way for you. Um, yeah. And then last and finally, like last but not least, oh my lord, is my like trade binder slash like staples binder that I always have. Let me open this up and see if I can get some of it on camera. Um, I always have like all these cards in here just in case I want to trade or just in case I want to be able to make sure I have all the cards that I need. Let me flip it off camera real quick so it's much easier to kind of navigate through. You know, uh, if I need to get some staples out of the deck or the binder, I have all my staples here ready to go uh, in case I need to make last minute card switches, last minute card decisions. I have everything I need with me. And then I have a section for trades as well or buying and selling or whatever. So always have a binder with you or a box or something like that to hold your cards basically because you don't wanna just travel around with a bunch of cards in the bottom of your backpack. Now that is the 10 things. I might've said 11 again that I would bring with me to a regional championship or any Pokemon event in general. So yeah, that's it. Leave in the comments below anything you think I missed. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content, obviously. And if you agree with me, and thank you guys so much. This is Rahul. I'll be back with more how to get ready for live events videos. Bye-bye.